too. So, Aaron? Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Aaron. I'm the uh, founder and the CEO of Embedded Technology. Uh, today, I'm going to show our experience over uh, the safe performance um, in an ARM-based microserver uh, cluster. Okay. Okay. First, I will introduce a little bit about Embedded because it was a, a startup company, and then I will uh, each, uh, point out the issues of traditional server that running safe with multiple OSD in a single server, okay? And uh, how, will, how will we uh, solve this issue by microserver based on ARM? Uh, and also, I will show uh, share some uh, the basic uh, high ability and scale out performance and some uh, use case uh, over the Hadoop. And uh, finally, I will uh, let you know uh, we use the uh, ARM-based microserver. It will save a lot of um, energy power for our server and how much uh, we can save for you. Okay. Uh, embedded, uh, we are founded uh, in 2013. Uh, the, we start with um, designing the ARM server for distributed uh, storage. Until now, uh, until, uh, until now, we have about uh, five peta or more of uh, storage now installed in uh, US and, and uh, uh, Europe. Yeah. And uh, uh, in 2016, uh, our products are awarded as the uh, best of interrupt uh, storage, storage winner. OK. So uh, first of all, uh, why uh, we are talking about the uh, ARM-based uh, server for Ceph. Uh The first issue is that uh, we are quite used to the x80 ser server, that one server is very, very powerful, and it serves um, many disks. Uh, for, for example, uh, 8 or 12 or even more OSDs in one chassis. And, uh, the issue, the first issue is uh, when the server is failed, no matter it is a uh, memory thing fail or some components uh, fail, you will, you, will, you will lost all of the data immediately inside that chassis. Yeah, that is, that is a big issue because, uh, you know, Safe will have to do its uh, self-healing when he detects OSD downs. So this will make, um, huge uh, network storm when it start to recover. Or it, it will take very, very long time uh, to recover. So this is a big issue that uh, for not only Ceph, but all of the uh, distributed storage. And uh, Ceph is a, a network-based uh, storage. It is not uh, the bottleneck is always not the CPU utility. We have customer uh, experience that tell us, no matter you have 10 gigabits of Ethernet or 20 gigabits of Ethernet, you still does not have enough bandwidth. And the CPU utility are always very low. So CPU is very idle and not uh, fully utilized, that's why uh, there's also a lot of uh, energy are waste. So uh, the third is certainly the power consumption. Yeah, uh, normally a uh, eight disk or uh, twelve disk server uh, as a OSD node, it will consume like uh, three hundred and fifty uh, watts. Yeah, you pay the energy and for the power consumption. You also pay the energy for the cooling. So you pay double of your, your, your expense over energy. So uh, the power consumption uh, is uh, consuming your budget. OK. So how we solve the, uh, this kind of problem by uh, using uh, 
a decentralized architecture of server instead of a traditional uh, one to many uh, servers. Uh, first, uh, in this diagram, I would like to uh, explain uh, what is the uh, microserver architecture. Okay, uh, in our uh, server for for the Ceph, uh, there are eight uh, independent ARM-based uh, server. Each ARM-based server uh, will play the rule of an OSD, or it can be a monitor, or can be a radar gateway. So uh, to give the best uh, bandwidth for each node or each OSD, uh, from each micro server, we have uh, certainly a data storage for the, uh, for the data. That is uh, 3.5 uh, SATA hard drive, or you can use 2.5 uh, SSD for the uh, uh, OSD data storage. Uh, also, uh, it, was, it has an um, independent uh, SSD for the journal disk. So the journal disk is uh, dedicated for that OSD, and it is not shared with others. And uh, on the server, we also have third storage, uh, which is for the operating system and the self software is root file system. Okay, so uh, the resource for any OSD is all independent, not shared with others. Okay, so they can provide dedicate. Uh, storage interface, memory, CPU, in, CPU resource, and also the main, most important is the network. Okay, every single server has a dual uh, Ethernet. Each one is 2.5 gigabit per second. Okay, so um, how to uh, make them as a cluster? Uh, we have built uh, two in chassis switch. Uh, in a one U chassis. The, chess, the switch uh, provides in cluster the in chassis uh, fabric for the OSD peering and also provides uh, uplink for the scale out and client access. So uh, to you fully utilize uh, the eight server by uh, eight server by two 2.5 gigabits Ethernet. We have to pro provide uh, 4 10 gigabits of uh, uplink. So this is uh, completed, completely eliminate the bottleneck of a safe uh, cluster. Yeah. So it is, this is uh, also very important uh, for a safe performance. And uh, in this architecture, uh, these two switch are uh, redundant for each other. Okay, so once uh, the number one fails, you still can access from number two. So uh, it is redundancy. And uh, if any node fails in this uh, chassis, you will lose only one uh, OSD. Any other seven uh, Servers are still working very well. Yeah, it never it never uh, affect each other. This is a picture of the uh, the server. Uh, you can uh, go to the Red Hat uh, booth to uh, have a look at it. Okay. Uh, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, there are eight micro servers. These eight micro servers are all independent, and. Uh, uh, there are one M.2 SSD dedicated for that uh, server for its OSD journal. Okay. And the one server has its own uh, hard drive, not uh, more than one. Okay. And uh, all of the module like here, uh, no matter it's a, a, a hard drive or the, uh, the server or the uh, switch are all hard swappable. In, certainly include the, uh, the power supply, yeah. So it is uh, uh, truly 
no single point of failure server uh, for safe. And also a very important, uh, because this is on server, it's very, very low power consumption, only 60 watts per unit. Yeah. Compared to um, similar uh, x 80 server uh, used for Ceph, you will consume at least 350 watts. Okay, so uh, compared to the, this, this diagram uh, show you the uh, difference of uh, one to many uh, server, one, one server to many OSD or versus the uh, micro server of one to one. When uh, the traditional server, um, you have many uh, disks uh, in one uh, server. So when you have one server fails, as I mentioned previously, uh, all of the disk will be lost. Yeah, this is a, a very, very big problem. But for the microserver architecture, this is a one-to-one -one architecture instead of one-to-many. So when you lose a single server, you just lose uh, one OSD instead of uh, so many. OK, so uh, the benefit of using uh, one single node to single OSD architecture on Ceph the, be the, the first uh, benefit is that it is a decentralized architecture. Uh, di distribute failure or minimize the failure domain to a single OSD in instead, of many o instead of single node. So that's a big node, it's a micro node. And uh, the NTPF uh, of an ARM server I can show you the server here. I have carry one. Okay. This is the this is the on server. It has very very simple circuit, very very few components. That means it has very very high MTBF compared to a thousand uh, component in a motherboard. The the chance of fail is very low compared to a x86 six server. Yeah. So. Uh, with a dedicated uh, hardware resource for the uh, OSD, you got uh, CPU, memory, uh, the storage, the network, and also important, you have dedicated uh, journal disk SSD for that uh, OSD. Nothing is shared. And the uh, aggregate uh, network can uh, give you a very, very high bandwidth in a single one chassis, which is uh, four 10 gigabit uh, per seconds. And then the, uh, the po low, low power consumption is another very, bi very big uh, advantage. Yeah. Not, only, uh, not only the uh, OSD can serve on this micro server, we also use uh, the server for monitor and uh, radar gateway and even ISGAS gateway. So you, you need not, no extra uh, hardware to uh, make a cluster. And the basic uh, high availability uh, architecture uh, is to have three chassis. That means uh, you put uh, one monitor in each chassis. And uh, you have, if you use uh, replication, you can use crash map to distribute your data replication to different chassis and in different uh, node server. Okay, so uh, start from a uh, basic three uh, chassis, uh, that which is 24 nodes. Uh, you will use three nodes as monitor and other 21 for the OSD. Uh, if you want to uh, add more or scale it out, you just add more chassis. And after the first three chassis, certainly you don't need extra uh, monitors. Then you can utilize all of the eight servers as your OSD. 
we did uh, we did uh, many uh, performance tests, and uh, uh, today I will sh share some of uh, the test performance with you. Uh, the first is that uh, the setup of a, a cluster, a self cluster test performance. Uh, we need a lot of uh, client server to uh, to squeeze all of its performance to know how it performs. Yeah. Uh, for for here, uh, we have uh, five uh, Intel Xeon server for the client as the loader of the test through the uh, 10 gigabit switch, and uh, we use uh, three uh, three units of microserver, ARM-based microserver, with 21 uh, SSD and uh, SSD journal and three monitors. And uh, uh, totally, uh, we create uh, 40 RBD. These RBD are for all of the clients. Uh, one client has his own RBD and make the FIO test over, uh, it, over it and aggregate the total uh, bandwidth from all of the uh, servers, client servers. Uh, OK, so uh, first of all, uh, this diagram uh, shows that the scale out performance. Uh, we start from uh, one chassis, which is seven OSDs, and add another chassis to have total 14, then add the third to have total 21 OSDs. You can see the I IOPS, the IOPS of read and write is very, very linear, uh, scaled. From, for example, this is 9,000. This is uh, almost 18. This is almost uh, 27 Ks for the write. Yeah. So uh, can achieve this is that proof the, the network uh, contribute a lot. Yeah. There's no uh, bottleneck uh, on the network, so we can do that. And also, uh, we make a test over uh, uh, different uh, uplink uh, channels uh, on the network uh, to compare if we have uh, all of the cluster, every chassis has only two 10 giga or uh, utilize all of the four uh, 10 giga network. Uh, how, what is the difference? Okay. So uh, here uh, we do uh, some uh, 4K uh, random write test with uh, uh, increase his uh, clients, number of clients. Then we compare its uh, aggregate uh, IOPS uh, of 20 giga uplink and 40 giga uplink. It shows that uh, average you get 50% uh, of total bandwidth increased. This proves that uh, the network uh, always be a bottleneck of the uh, self cluster. So uh, to have a very, uh, very fulfilled uh, network for for a, for a, a OSD server, which is very important. OK. And uh, uh, this is an experiment or test that we did uh, to know how fast uh, if an OSD uh, fails, uh, that it can uh, rehear to uh, completely uh, healthy. So we uh, have, uh, we use uh, 16. Uh, 10 terabyte hard drive and uh, uh, replica, replica two uh, pools. And uh, uh, we write totally around uh, uh, 48 terabytes of data. So it's average, uh, each OSD has three terabytes of uh, data uh, inside. Then we, uh, then we uh, suddenly uh, turn off one OSD to see how uh, it will reheal. Uh, totally, uh, we used five hours and 10 minutes to have that uh, disk 
the data loss in that disk rehealed uh, to all of the other uh, 15 uh, OSDs. Yeah. So uh, compared to a um, traditional disk array, uh, it will take a very, very long time, more than uh, 41 hours, which is on two and a half days to just recover uh, one disk. Yeah. So Ceph is very, very uh, uh, powerful uh, because all of the OSD will uh, take over the reheal. Uh, if you have more OSD, uh, the time of recover uh, will uh, get in less and less linearly. Uh, we can show you that we can uh, it scale out linearly. That means uh, when you have disk fail, it will reheal uh, multiple times. You have multiple uh, OSDs. OK. Uh, next, uh, so I would like to share uh, a use case uh, in a telecom company uh, in Taiwan. Uh, that is the uh, biggest uh, telecom company in Taiwan. They have, uh, uh, they have a cluster which is used uh, Hadoop file system uh, for the uh, big data ana analysis. Uh, the scenario is that they collect uh, different uh, data source uh, from everywhere and collect to um, a staging server and convert it to um, three copy of HDFS. And each HDFS has its data node. Every data node uh, is a server and is a computing node uh, with storage. So it's like a, a hyper-converged infrastructure. So computing and storage are combined together. But when they grow their, their, their cluster and the storage getting um, bigger and bigger, up to now, they have uh, more than two petabytes of data stored in that. But it still grow very fast. The issue is that the HDFS, when you want to scale out your storage capacity, you have to scale out your computing as well. That is uh, very, very expensive. They don't, the computing power, they already uh, very enough because uh, they have hundreds of servers. Yeah, so they want to uh, separate the storage and the compute and the computing node. So they need an um, external storage to store uh, the data. Uh, they are not expect to uh, have a very high performance uh, external, external storage, but they can tear in their data to have. Uh, Hard data still use uh, HDFS, but uh, the history and the cold data were stored in some other wells. So uh, we tried uh, to uh, work with them with many uh, different ways uh, from Ceph to uh, make it work with uh, Hadoop. Uh, if you find the papers and you get internet to search, uh, you will find uh, several ways. First is the Java plugin for, for Hadoop. And uh, we make it works, but the performance is very poor. Because it, you have uh, uh, Ceph is based on C, and, and uh, Hadoop is based on Java. So the performance is very poor. And uh, we also tried uh, the way of Amazon, like S3A. We make it work with S3A. But its performance is not uh, good as well. So finally, uh, finally uh, we use a uh, Ceph file system as its local file system. And then uh, it is not 100% fulfill their um, needs, but it solves a lot of their problem. Yeah. To solve uh, the computing storage, uh, can separate with the storage and reduce their cost. And uh, when the server, because uh, their Hadoop uh, file system, the disk is inside every computing node. 
when any uh, disk fails, it's make a lot of trouble. You have to immediately uh, to replace uh, the hard drive in the server. So that's a very high load of uh, operation and the maintenance. So that's so we uh, work out a way to uh, use the file, save file system uh, for the Hadoop. Uh, before we uh, make it in production, we have to make a um, proof of concept in the lab. So besides uh, the save file system, I have mentioned, uh, we have worked on uh, other solutions like S3A or the, the Java plugin. N no, no others work except for the uh, safe file system. Uh, we use it as a um, uh, local file system. We make a, a small benchmark. So uh, in the benchmark, uh, we compare two Hadoop file system. One is use uh, three, uh, four virtual machines, but give it a physical uh, link to the uh, physical uh, disk to simulate what's the uh, uh, Hadoop in its uh, environment. Because uh, they are using a uh, bare metal for the Hadoop uh, analysis. Compared to, uh, compared to uh, use the Ceph uh, cluster as a local file system, uh, we make, uh, we use the uh, test uh, DFSIO uh, to measure its uh, throughput uh, on a map reduce on a Hadoop uh, computing node. The simulation is that we give uh, three units of uh, our micro server, which has uh, also 21 OSDs uh, in a small scale. It shows uh, Ceph has faster uh, write performance uh, in some point compared to the uh, blue line of uh, Hadoop file system. Uh, the test of, with varies of uh, file size or number of files. Yeah, most of the uh, most of the test uh, set, uh, shows better performance. But for the read, uh, we got a slower performance on set file system. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, this is not a, this is not an issue for them because this is uh, they want to have a trade-off between very uh, high expensive and very high power consumption uh, uh, HDF uh, HDFS server or versus uh, our low power server. Yeah, so uh, we got uh, better performance over the uh, right, but a little bit. Uh, lower performance uh, for, the, for the read. OK. Uh, so our product uh, is a combination of three key components. One is the uh, ARM server. And uh, in the center, in the core, is Ceph. Uh, currently, we are using uh, Jewel uh, it, as our uh, Ceph. And the third, on top of uh, Ceph, we have a unified uh, virtual storage manager, which is a web user interface for the user. Uh, we make this is because uh, when we uh, promote our product to our customer, um, many of the customer, they have an issue that they say, yes, uh, Ceph is very powerful, very good. I would like to use it. but." I don't know how to use it. <laughs> Are you going to uh, ask me to learn command line? <laughs> we made this problem. So uh, we come back to think and decide to make a, a safe user interface for all our plans. That make it uh, much easier and um, uh, lower the barrier, uh, the skill of the user, yes. So make it very simple. Yeah. Later, I can show you a video about one minute about our user interface on the video. Yeah. And uh, uh, we are demoing in uh, uh, Red Hat Booth. Uh, 
welcome uh, to come to the uh, Rehab booth. We can talk about if you have any questions. And uh, uh, our product uh, was the winner of uh, Interop 2016. Yes. So uh, now uh, we have our uh, on server. What is the next? Uh, be because uh, two years ago, uh, when we designed this server, uh, we have only 32 bits on server chip to use. And uh, most of the software, including Ceph, on, is not supported by, uh, it does not support the Ceph. And uh, so it does not su support ARM. So we have to do any, most of the things uh, from zero until now, everything by ourselves. Yeah. And uh, now uh, the 64 bits uh, ARM uh, has become reality. So we are going to design a new platform uh, with same uh, form factor, but it is 64 bits uh, ARM server. Uh, that can give us more memory uh, to use because uh, we, now we have only two uh, gigabits of uh, memory. We have to uh, very uh, carefully to use all of this limita limited uh, memory, but it still, even it get a very good performance, but we think we can make it much better if we have more memories. And also uh, for the SSD, OSD, uh, if we have a powerful uh, CPU, then we can make it almost the same as the Intel, Intel server, no difference. Yeah. And uh, because we are also using the, the server as its gateway, so uh, we will have better uh, performance on uh, gateway like Redos gateway. And finally, certainly, we can use uh, most of uh, a distribution of, of Linux and Ceph, including the Red Hat or CentOS. Yeah. OK. So finally, uh, I will give you a um, uh, demonstration over the uh, web user interface. OK, this is an uh, interface of uh, login uh, from the first uh, node to create the cluster. Uh, you can uh, use this interface to cre create your first monitor. And then you can use it to create a multiple OSD at a time. You choose uh, if you have a journal or not. Uh, our default is uh, journal. Uh, Okay, this shows the MDS. You create your MDS. Oh, okay. This shows uh, the crash map. Uh, you, you have a uh, visualized uh, chassis and uh, rack. And you move your, your uh, host to the, that chassis to define uh, your crash map. Okay, this is the um, pool creation. Uh, you can create a replica or a erasure code pool. Also, you can uh, create image, and uh, we provide the uh, snapshot, and also tiering for pool. So everything is uh, by web-based web interface. This is the authentication of uh, CephX user. And then you can edit its uh, compatibility. Then you can download your key. This is a, a Cephas and uh, MDS. Okay, create, assign your pool for your file system. Then you have like, active uh, MDS and the uh, file system.
This is uh, creating the backend pool for OpenStack. S3 and Swift users. You can create as many uh, users as you want. At the quota, this is the dashboard and several other uh, management functions, including N uh, NTP and OD log. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for, for your attention.